Hello, this is Mois Jacobs for the Bar Spoken Word on the 8th of September 2021. And uh, I'm here to introduce Colm Scully, our special guest for today. Um, Colm is a, a poet, but he's also a, a, an award winning poet, actually, but he's also um, an award winning video filmmaker. He actually just won an award. A micro, help me there, Colin. What was your award at? at what kind of festival was that? Uh, micro, Micromania in out of New York. Okay. Uh, short, uh, films shorter than five minutes. Okay. Um, festival films. It's it's ongoing at the moment, actually online. Um. So there's the the live uh, the live uh, performances are uh, over the next number of weeks. Well, as everyone who is here knows, and before I continue, can I ask everyone to mute themselves unless unless you're actually speaking, because we've had a bit of uh, problems with our uh, echoes. And the more people are online, the more echoes we can get, as well as other noises. Thank you very much. Um, Colm is, of course, here to do uh, the first of a two-part poetry workshop, and he will explain how how he will set about that. And he's also got information to send out. And um, well, Colm is a former chemical engineer. I don't know exactly what that is, but um, maybe we can talk about that some other time. And um, he, uh, as, as, I, as we said just before the recording started, if you do have any questions for Colm that you want to be asked at a later stage, please put them in the chats and Catherine will channel them at the appropriate moment. We all, after the, the, the workshop is finished, we'll also have an open mic after a little break. So anyone who wants to join that is very welcome. Um, I, I will just give the word to Colm Scully. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks Moz and thanks to Boris for um, asking me to do this. Uh, that's br it's brilliant to, to, to be able to do it. And thanks for everybody for turning up. There's a great crowd here. There's 33. You can all hear me. Hear me okay? Um, so I, I'll start away. Um, I was going to start by uh, just talking about how I got into poetry films. Um, I suppose people probably who are on know what poetry film is. Poetry film is just a combination of poetry and film to enhance the poem or uh, maybe to um, create a, a, new, a, a new work that you know, is a combination of both. Um, so how I got into poetry film, um, I saw my first poetry film actually about 30 years ago in the Triscoll Arts Centre in Cork, which is still going. Uh, it was a trailer to a film and it was an English um, poetry film called uh, 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 An Elaborately Signal Landscape. And it, it basically had a beautiful poem, but what it had then is pictures of signposts uh, coming at you, you know, at a rate. And I, I just was very impressed by it. Um, but I suppose at the time I was writing poetry, but I never intended to make poem, poetry films or be a filmmaker. And of course, at the time, uh, being a filmmaker was, uh, was, wasn't a simple thing to do because uh, you, you needed a lot of equipment, you needed to have the connections, you needed a lot of highly trained people. And of course that has changed totally now. Um, but uh, that was the first I saw of poetry film 30 years ago. Uh, it was really eight years ago or seven or eight years ago when I came back and saw it again, when I joined Oveil, a lot of you know Oveil in Cork, the open mic session. Um, when, when I joined that again about eight years ago, uh, Paul Casey, who runs it, was do making a poetry film called The Lamas Hireling, which is a poem by Ian Dewey, and he was looking for extras to go out and film the, uh, the poem, poetry film. It's a beautiful poem, and you can actually get that poetry film online, The Lamas Hireling. But uh, I headed out, Hania, to a farm in, uh, on the outskirts of the city uh, on a cold October day with my uh, seven-year-old daughter at the time, Isabel, and um, she got very wet. She was she part of, played a part of a, a little girl at the fair, um, but she her feet got very wet and she got very cold. But uh, that was the price she had to pay for me getting back into poetry film. And um, so uh, that's the, after that, Paul 
uh, started what's known as Oval um, Poetry Film Festival. Um, it's part of the Winter Warmer Festival now, and that was about seven years, seven years ago he started that. And within two years, I decided to make a poetry film myself. And along with Conor McManus, my friend, we made a poetry film and entered it. Um, at the time, I can remember I got the help of a student filmmaker. Um, and the year after, I got the help of the Cork Films Centre. And they, we, we took, borrowed a camera from them and went out uh, down to Mahan and started filming. And they helped as well with the editing. So um, they, they did the editing and I think Final Cut Pro was the editing uh, program that they used. And that's what I've been using since, but they helped me with the editing. So, it, you know, it's, it, it's all about getting, getting a hand and working with people as, as you go along and collaborate, collaborating on poetry film is a great, great idea. You know, it, uh, it gives you a boost and helps you along. Um, so I suppose just to say, obviously, that has all changed now, needing all those, um, that equipment 30 years ago, because now you can make a poetry film with a, a smartphone. Um, uh, so, you know, that's the wonderful thing about modern technology, obviously. And a lot of people are getting in, in, a lot more involved in poetry film because of that. Um, the, the next thing I'm going to talk about there is just types of poetry film. Um, I, you know, I've heard poetry films called a lot of things, uh, video poems, poem films, film poems, cinematic poems, poetic films. Uh, basically, they're all a combination of film and poem. The potential, of course, is endless. Um, but it may be helpful to divide it into two genres. Poetry films, which I tend to make, where the poem predates the visual and the visual is an interpretation of the words. Um, so you start off with a poem and then you make a poetry film after. That's what, what I would call poetry film. And then the other type is video poems. And video poems, they're a, a more holistic art form, really, where the words and film are created as one, you could say. Uh, so that's quite popular and, and uh, it's a bit more avant-garde. And an awful lot of people who make poetry films are actually filmmakers. So it's, it's, it's quite, it, quite rare, really, to see someone who makes the film and writes the poem it tends to be a combination so the video poem is more a symbiosis between the video and the sound uh, but having said that one of the great things about this relatively young genre is that there are no rules and people are not trying to impose rules on you on you literally anything goes um, of course there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet written about it uh, and i know that even recently sarah tremlett um in england she 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 published a book if you're big in, big, in, big into academic tomes she published a book called the poetic supportry film so if you're, you really want to delve into the the academic um and and thoughts on that and theory of poetry film you can you can get that online um another thing that's interesting is um placing music on poetry film um yeah, you can you can put the music in to try and meet meet the beat of the words, but uh, that 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 doesn't always work. Um, many poetry films leave music out, so if you pick the wrong music, it can be overpowering, and people are listening to the music and they're not absorbing the words or their meaning. Um, also, you can put subtitles or voice on, or you can do both. So you know you can take any option. I've seen some wonderful poetry films that had no words, and I would call them poetic short films, really. Um, I can remember seeing a, po a poetic film where it was just seagulls flying against the wind on a beach. And, um, you know, they, were, you, you, they, they couldn't move because of the wind. They were flying into the wind. And that, there was no words, but it was still a poetic short film. And it was actually part of a poetry film competition. Um, so, you know, it's just creating a poetic feeling. That, that's what you're trying to do. Um, so. I'm going to start off now by actually showing you, uh, having talked enough there for a while, I'm going to show you um, a poetry film of my own um, that I made a number of years ago. And this is a poem that I wrote quite a few years before I made the film. It's called Philip's Modern Atlas of the World. So it's not a literal interpretation of the words. And I suppose a lot of people, when they think poetry films or when they start making poetry films, they think they may, they may do a literal interpretation, and that's fine, you can do that, but it doesn't always work. 
Um, so this is a more suggestive piece uh, where, this, where the image symbolizes some aspect of the words in a kind of a visual metaphor. So what I'm gonna do now is share my screen and hope and, and uh, hopefully you'll be all be able to watch this and hear it. What's the audio, Colin? It's coming now. Okay. These are the countries of the world. The atlas speaks to my ten-year-old brain. Era, Britain. East and West Germany. The Soviet Union, Yugoslavia. The book is covered in thick green paper that also covers my bedroom wall. I am understanding Europe. White capped mountains, earth brown coasts. I trace my fingers across Asia, Burma, Vietnam, North and South. The straight and parallel lines of Africa, Rhodesia, the Sudan. Indented outlines of former nations fade into contours and railway tracks. Palestine, Montenegro, Armenia, Kazakhstan. These seem to me beyond romantic. Elusive cultures lost forever. The pages hold no hint of tragedy, only of kings and not their crimes. I do not even try to imagine that these states might re-emerge as I peruse my new school atlas behind safe suburban blinds. So um, hopefully we we're able to hear that. Um, so now I'm going to just talk a little bit about the history of poetry film. Um, if you have any questions, throw them into the chat, and um, I'll be I'll be, I'll chat for a while, and then I'll take questions, um, if that's okay, and then I'll um, take more questions at the end. So I'm kind of two 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 two. Uh, I'll take questions at two two points. Um, the history of poetry film, I, I'm not going to burden you with the, much of the history of poetry film, because as, as you can imagine, you know, poetry film is probably, you, you could say poetry film is around since the history of film itself, like a hundred years ago, poems were being put to, fil to film, but then um, other people might say that it's very new, it's a very new genre, as I said, I, I saw one 30 years ago, um, uh, and um, but if you do want to, to find out about it, and there's a very good 12 minute film at poetryfilmlive.com, um, I've sent that link on to people who, who I think you got a sheet, a PDF, or a, a Word document before the, the workshop with details on it of websites and stuff. And poetryfilmlive.com is a good one, and you can see a, a 12 minute um, video there of the history of poetry film. Um, one thing is certain, over the last number of years, it's after growing and burgeoning, and there's a lot of festivals now worldwide, uh, in the US, England, Germany, South America and Spain, India, uh, you know, uh, South America seems to be, it's very popular, in Spanish-speaking countries it's very popular, and English-speaking countries as well. Uh, for, for some reason, I don't see many French-speaking French countries involved, but um, that might be, they're probably doing their own thing. Um, uh, 
I'm going to show you another film now, just to, to, to keep it kind of, uh, keep it rolling along. This is a, an award, award winning portrait film. It, it, it's called um, Virginia Gave Me Roses. And um, this won first prize at the Oval Poetry Film Competition in 2019. Um, Stan Knott, uh, I'm not sure if he's on tonight, but Stan uh, uh, of the Barras uh, and myself were the judges. Stan also makes poetry films, very good poetry films. And uh, this, this, this was the winner. And it was the first Irish winner of the festival. Um, it was the poet was Lanny O'Hanlon. She's a, a fantastic waterford poet. And Fiona Arian was the filmmaker. So um, what I like about this was uh, it, it brought the words to life. In, in, it's actually quite a literal de depiction of a divorce party. Uh, what I loved about it was the, the constancy of the colour and tones and theme. The filmmaker stayed with the party, even though the beautiful words strayed away to another place in time. Um, so I, I'm going to share this with you now. I hope I'm not going too fast. I might be talking too fast, but uh, here's Virginia gave me roses. I'll try to slow down a bit. Virginia gave me roses. Put the flowers in my mother's silver bowl. Fiona made heart-shaped tarts with rose jelly, gold leaf. Joanna gave me wedding cake on the day of my divorce. Breathe in. Each colour a different scent. Age 14, the campsite near Lyon, continental cologne, the Parisian in the mirror beside me, the way she combed her hair then carefully tossed it, her undulating walk back to the tent she shared with two men. Studying older girls on the beach, hip bones, bellies, a soft presence and sweetness as I wondered, was I that? Could I be that? Michelle, our first baby, first sight of her spiraled crown, her rosy flesh and my arms. Scatter fallen petals in bath water, confetti. So every time I see that, I, I, I enjoy it. I've seen it loads of times now, but uh, I enjoy it even more each time. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about now, um, before I stop for some questions, is probably what a lot of people would like to hear about is, um, you know, the, the, the nuts and bolts of poetry filmmaking. So I'm getting on to the equipment you need. Now, so to begin with, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I have. Uh, as I said, you, all you need is a smartphone essentially but obviously the more stuff you have the better you can do so what, what i have is i have an imac with one terabyte memory which it, i think is important because uh, not, not if you it's been important for me because when you're saving films it actually you know it, it, it's great to have good a lot of memory because they take up a lot of memory and the imac desktop computers aren't very popular now but for for video editing they're actually great because you have room, you have more room to see what you're doing because it's all basically drag and drop. So you can do it on a phone, no problem, but the bigger the screen you have, a laptop, um, the easier it is. Um, I have uh, an SLR, a Canon SLR camera, um, nothing special, but I use that for, for stills. I have um, 
Final Cut Pro is the editing software. That's an Apple editing software. So you can only do that on Apple and that's a professional editing software, but it only costs a couple of hundred euro. I got it for about 250 euro about eight years ago. And that was the only investment I had to do. And it, it, it's, it takes a bit of work, uh, work on it to, to get used to it, but um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great editing package. Um, I have other bits and bobs uh, as well. Um, for instance, uh, I have here, um, uh, what I find is that um, you get away with a lot on visuals. If you have fuzzy visuals, or if you have, um, you know, um, uh, you can say it's old fashioned or it's kind of, uh, uh, you're, you're trying to create an atmosphere, but with sound, you don't really get away with it. You have to have quality sound. And generally on iPhone, on phones, on smartphones and laptops, the mic isn't very good. So if you, if you are going to invest in something, I would invest in just, just something, what I have here, which is a, a Zoom H1. The, as it's, it's called Zoom. There was a Zoom before uh, Zoom, the, uh, the social media um, came about. This is called a Zoom H1, and it's just a, an, an inexpensive um, uh, mic. Um, but it, it records good quality sound, and then you can download it to your computer. So that is one thing that, that I think is, is worth buying. Um, of course, some people do um, recordings in, in recording, recording studios. That last poetry film there was recorded in a recording studio, uh, I see, at the end. Uh, so you can go to whatever level you want, you know. Um, so that's the equipment I have. Um, but... It, it, if you're starting off, you only need a smartphone. Um, and with the smartphone down, you can download free editing package onto your phone. Uh, that way you can record a poem, film your footage, or download free footage from the internet, and then put them together with your editing package. So they're the three things you need. You know, you need your, your, your film footage uh, 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 and, and your poem, obviously, and your sound, it's backing sound. Uh, so when me and Connor made our first film, as I said, we actually borrowed a video camera from the Cork Film Centre. Now, video cameras are very expensive. You can't buy them cheaply. But I don't think you need them because um, smartphones now are, have fantastic um, um, video cameras on them. And, um, you know, the, the, the rea uh, some, some full-length films have been made with, smart, with Apple iPhones um, by, you know, respected um, the directors. Um, uh, as I said, having a laptop makes it easier, of course, because you have a bigger screen and you're manipulating and dragging and dropping stuff is easier when you have space, when you have space to do it. Um, and as I was saying, I would think the single most important thing to have in making a portrait film is a good editing package. Um, so for, I, I'm just going to go through some of the editing packages that you can use. Um, for Apples, you normally get iMovie free on your iPhone or on your, on, a, on your iPad, iMovie is in there and that's quite a good package. It's not as good as Final Cut Pro, but it's good. Um, um, for Android phones, um, there's, a, there's a lot of free packages out there. Most Androids have video editor on them, I think, uh, which is free, it comes with the phone and it's easy to use. Um, now, when I say it's easy to use, you, you still have to work on it. I mean, it's going to take Really, I would have thought if you're not that techy, you know, a couple of hours at least, maybe four hours working on it before you, you get used to using it. Now, some, a lot of people who are used to technology, they might, they'll probably figure it out in a half an hour. Um, I took months to figure out Final Cut Pro. I wasn't that techy. Um, other packages for Android that are out there that are free are OneShot and Filmora. Filmora, um, I downloaded it onto a, an Android laptop there the other day and it, it was easy to use, but the only thing about the free option was that it left um, uh, an imprint on the, on the film. So, you, you know, for the, for, the, for, the, for the purposes of this workshop, there's no problem with that. You can use Filmora and leave that imprint that says Filmora on it, but you would have to buy the package to take that imprint off, I think. Uh, but, you know, you can send on, if you're making a portrait film for this, for next month, which is the plan, um, you can you can use Filmora and leave the the imprint on on the film. Um, but the list out there is endless, really, of editing packaging, of editing packages. 
uh, but they all they all basically follow the same um, the same pattern. Uh, they they do the same thing. Uh, you know, they're 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 really copied from each other. You know, um, you can also use YouTube. YouTube has its own video making, and YouTube Studio and YouTube Video Video Editor. I haven't used it, but it's there. Um, uh, as regards cameras, just to say, uh, I bought an SLR camera a number of years ago, thinking that I use it to make my poetry films, but I found that the video on it isn't great. The stills are brilliant. So that's why I went away then recently and just invested in, 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 in an, an iPhone 11, um, because the camera on that is way better than the SLR. Um, and what I find actually about a lot of Android phones, they tend to have good still, take good stills, but they don't focus on the video camera. Whereas the iPhone tends to have a very good video camera. Um, I've been talking there now. There's, there's 17 things in the chat there, but I've been talking for a while. So I'm just going to uh, take some questions. Um, Catherine, do you, want, do you want to send me some questions? Yeah. No, the first question is from Patrick. Do you have any concerns regarding copyright of your poetry films? Uh, Patrick, I saw that there a while ago, yeah, um, I'll be talking about that in a minute as well, um, about um, copyright. Um, to be honest, I just put copyright Colin Scully at the end of them. Um, like, I'm not making any money out of poetry films at the moment, so I don't think anyone's going to steal them or anything. Um, what I will be talking about more is um, the copyright of the material in them, you know, with the, the stuff you download. So that is something you probably have to think about, all right. And I will be chatting about that. Uh, but in terms of it, their own, the, my own copyright, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure really uh, where I stand, you know. But... Thanks then. All right, Colin, the, the next question. Do you want to take the next question? Yeah, please. From Mose, do you read your poems differently? when they are accompanied by visuals? Um, I, I, I wouldn't think so, really. I, I think I, when I, I kind of write my poems. Maybe I've written my poems with a visual, uh, w w thinking about the visual to begin with. Maybe I'm a kind of a visual poet because I have found that I, 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 I've written poems that people didn't find accessible. And yet when I put them to, um, to film, people did find them accessible. So. Um, you know, I, I, maybe I'm that kind of poet and maybe just poetry film is, is the right thing for me. And I don't think I, I read them different because um, I suppose I read them as I, re as I wrote them, I think, really. Um, but of course, what you do is you, 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 there's, there could be an awful lot of space between lines on, on a poetry film, you know, you spread it out. That's fantastic because there's so much going on. You, 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 can, you, you can spread out and a one minute poem can be two minutes long, you know? Now, um, the next question is from Anne and the similar one from Brian about the name of the Apple editing app again and can Colin put a list of all those things and tools needed in the chat? But Rose was saying in the chat that there's a lot of information given at the bottom of the email that we got. Yeah, all of that is in the email. Um, it's Final Cut Pro. Uh, Final Cut Pro, F I N A L C U T P R O, and uh, 10, I think. Well, I have Final Cut Pro 10 or X. Um, I'm not sure if that's the, yeah, it is the latest actually because I, I, I downloaded the, the latest. And the, the, the funny thing is, I was able to download it for free. I only had to buy it once and I downloaded the, the latest update there a month ago for free. Okay. And it's asking, what about music copyright? Yeah, and I, I'll uh, talk about that as well. Um, like, you can use your own music. What I use is sound, freesound.org. Um, and that's all Creative Commons. I'll be talking about that. And um, all you have to do is um, give an attribution. So uh, that, I think there's an awful lot of free stuff out there with free copyright. And that's so there, there really isn't a need unless you really have to going outside of that. 
Right. Alison wants to know about a, a list of poetry film festivals that are free entry for submissions, please. And when submitting to festivals, did you go direct or use platforms like Film Freeway? Um, yeah, uh, I can make that list. Um, some of them are free and some of them aren't. Oveil is free. Um, most of them, I think about half of them, you, 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 there's a kind of a fee. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of them are free. Um, some of them are quite expensive then. Like I, 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 the, some of them might be $40. So there, there is money making rackets out there. Um, just like there is in everything. Um, yeah, to be honest, I use Film Freeway a lot. It's very handy. Um, most, mostly you can apply through Film Freeway and it's, it's very handy. It's very, it makes it a lot easier. Well, I heard that Cock Indie Festival, that if you don't, like, I didn't get, one little thing I did, I didn't get it in there this year, but apparently you can be doing it over two years that your work, you can apply again next year or something like that. Stan was saying you'll be two years to put your poems through different competitions. I'm not sure about that now, to be honest, Mags. Yeah. About Dean de Cork, I, I thought it was just the one year, so I, I don't know that. Yeah, okay. Uh, another question come from Mose. Can you say something about the artistic choices you make when selecting visuals? Um, that's a hard question because I suppose I, I, I don't think I'm, I, I'm, you know, I can't tell people how to make their kind of aesthetic decisions. And um, what I would say is that, you know, what I find dealing with some people is that a lot of people think of them. Um, they, they see films, they see ads, they see TV programs. And when they want to make a poetry film, then they want that quality, that level. And you're not going to get that. But they want literal story. You know, they want very literal interpretations. Um, I think nine times out of 10, a literal interpretation of, of the poems and the words isn't going to work. I would have thought. Um, it should be something different. It should be it should be a poem in itself, the visual, if you know what I mean. It's not just a literal interpretation of the words. It's it, it it's 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 like you're writing the poem again visually. So people have to do their own thing there, really, you know. But um, like everybody's choices are different, really, and everybody has different uh, sensibilities in aesthetic, I suppose. Will I move on? Uh, will, I, will I take a few more questions? What do you think? I can take more questions at the end as well. I can take one more question and then I'll move on, will I? I think we're done for now and the questions okay, come. Perfect, great. But, uh, somebody, if, any, if I've missed out on anything, just put in the chat there, please. That's great, I'll, I'll continue. So that's brilliant, there were great questions there. So now I'll, I'll come back to where I was. And this is kind of uh, addressing some of the questions there now. Um, it's got material sources. So where do you get your material sources from? So um, for, for a long time, I just took my, my, my own footage and photos, you know, I, I, and, and that's what I used. Uh, a lot of poetry films, filmmakers use stuff from the internet, free stuff. Uh, so the beauty of poetry film, it can be stills, drawings, animation, film, or a combination. So the web is is full of sites you can download from. YouTube is particularly hard to download from and has lots of copyright requirements. So I rarely take stuff off YouTube. Uh, what you want to look for is called Creative Commons. That's Creative Commons. Uh, and which their archive set up to allow artists and creators to use material copyright free. So the detail is on the websites. But in most cases, all you have to do is give attribution or credit at the end of the film. Uh, to the artist who produced the material. So and we're talking about the video now, the video, the video piece of the poetry film. So some of the websites I recommend, and I have this on the, uh, the email that Mo sent out, uh, is vidizipexels.com. You don't have to remember this because it's on the email. Uh, Vidivo, Prelinger Archive, which is very old footage, going back 50 years and 60 years, a lot of black and white footage. And Internet Archive has an awful lot of stuff as well. And there's more out there, but there are just five that I found good. Um, as for sound, the same thing covers it. 
I use freestone.org. I don't know how they make the money. But they have lots of free sound. Um, of course, your video editing software will have some backing tracks and sound effects as well. Also, you can use GarageBand to make your own sound, um, which it's, it's not too hard to use GarageBand, uh, which just creates your own music. And of course, then, if you know someone who plays an instrument or you're um, someone who's a musician, they can do it for you. Uh, Mags Creedon is a case in point. I collaborated with her on a poetry film recently, and she's a brilliant musician, and we used her music. And she recorded in a recording studio, so that makes it a lot easier. Um, uh, recently, just uh, an interesting point about copyright. Um, I used, I, I was using images of paintings recently in kind of ekphrastic poetry films. Um, and I had to get the, the copyright, the rights from some galleries. So it was quite a bit of work, uh, emails going to and forth to get the rights. And I ended up having to pay for one of them uh, to a gallery in Estonia. And I, but it was only in the end of, and to use the, the, the film and get a good quality, to, to use the picture and get a good quality uh, picture was only 12 euro or something. So, you know, it's not excessive or it shouldn't be excessive. I mean, if it's excessive, you're probably being ripped off. Um, just as an, uh, an exam, uh, one thing to make point, you should you have to be quite uh, careful of copyright because I did hear on radio recently of someone who had a, 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 an Airbnb site down in Yall in Cork and they put up a photo on their, their site of the clock tower in Yall and next thing that they just got off the web a, a photograph and next thing they got a, a solicitor's letter in the door from Germany with a 2,000 uh, euro, um, looking for 2,000 euros. So that, you, you kind of have to be careful, you know? Uh, but um, there's a lot of free stuff up there, up there and the Creative Commons websites tell you, you can use them for free. Um, just on other websites, uh, to watch other uh, poetry films, read about poetry films, find out about competitions and make contacts, I'd recommend the following websites. And this is on the, um, the email as well. And we can copy this onto you again. Movingpoems.com is a very good American website. Uh, poetry Films Live is an English one. Liberated Words on Facebook. You can go on there on social media and you can connect in with other poetry filmmakers, very good. And if you do, after this, want to take a course in poetry filmmaking, uh, there's another website in England and they give virtual um, courses on poetry filmmaking. It's called elephantsfootprint.com. So um, I know the people there and they're, they're good. So, um, you know, the, just in case you want, you, you want to, you have to pay for that, obviously. Uh, in terms of competitions, once you're up and running and making poetry films, you can post, post them at the social media groups that I mentioned above. You can enter competitions. Um, a few good ones are the Oval Poetry Film Competition, that's free. Doolin Writers Week Poetry Film Competition. Um, they didn't have it for last year, but they'll probably have it again next year. That's in February. Um, Zebra in Germany, that's probably free. That's the biggest one, Zebra. Um, Real Poetry Festival in Texas. I'm not sure that's free or not. Cadence in the US isn't free, I don't think. International Video and Poetry Film Festival in Athens um, is free, I think. And Weimar poetry film festival in Germany they're just 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 a short list but um I have that those down as well on on my on the email and uh, one of the great things about poetry film I suppose is that you can publish it in line and you can still send it to multiple competitions simultaneously so this is in strong contrast obviously to poetry journals and the poetry journal world where you know they won't accept simultaneous uh, submissions if you pr publish it in a magazine you can't publish it anywhere else uh, these kind of archaic um, kind of mid last century rules that the, uh, the, the, the poetry journals um, have. Uh, there's none of that in poetry film world. You can publish it anywhere you want and you can enter it for loads of competitions. Um, I've also in, entered for film festivals. Now, most film festivals, just not poetry film festivals, uh, standard film festivals like the Indie Cork and um, Fastnet Film Festival down in West Cork and most of them you have to pay for, but they're interested in poetry films as well. And I've had success in a number of them and got shown on those. Um, just in talking, no, just in terms of poetry film in Cork and Ireland, 
Um, uh, as I mentioned before, there are two photo film festivals in Ireland that I know of, uh, O'Vale in Cork and um, in Doolin, there's one as well. Um, uh, the one in, in Cork, in O'Vale is on in November. It'll be on live this year on November as part of the Winter Warmer Festival. So if you're around and you want to see some fantastic poetry film festivals in Cork, head, head to the Winter Warmer Festival. Um, it's a great place to go. Um, there are a bunch of people involved in poetry film uh, around Cork. Um, Paul Casey, as I said, Stan Knott, Karen McCartan, Michelle Delay, Julie Field. Um, I've collaborated with Mags Creedon, on, who's online there. I've collaborated with Sue Blue, I don't think Sue is on. Um, and also, you know, Catherine has made a poetry film. Catherine, you've made one, haven't you, recently? Um, I know that. So there's a lot of people out there making poetry films. And there are lots of people around the country in Dublin and around that making them as well. Um, I, I suppose one thing I think about poetry film is that if you want your poems to be heard, you know, it's a great way to go about it because it's, it, you're getting access to more, more people reading your poems. You could write a fantastic poem and send it off to one journal and there might only be 20 or 30 copies of that. Only 10 or 15 people might ever read that poem. Whereas if we make a poetry film, you know, an awful lot more people are going to see it online. So I think it's a great way actually of, of getting people to hear your poems as well. Um, um, what I'm going to now, now do is um, I'm going to show you a little video about making a simple poetry film, right? Of course, it's not feasible here for us to make a poetry film now at this workshop. Uh, so what I've done is I've provided, I've made four two minute clips, video clips, which I made from the internet, in, stuff from the internet and stuff from my own photographs as well. And I also made four audio clips, uh, which I took from free, I think, mostly freesound.org. And what I did is I, I have them up on Google Drive. I sent the links for them onto ye. So ye should be able to um, download them onto your computers. Um, if you click on the link and you can't get in, it'll probably send an email to me and I'll give access then. Um, oh, I, I thought it would be give you access uh, right away, but if not, I'll just say you've, you're given access so there's no problem there just click on it and they'll send an email to me and if any of you have issues getting access to them and um, get on to myself and Moe's I've left my email address as well on the sheet so this sh will make sure people get access to them and can download them into computers so we've made the four two minute videos the four two minute audios and, and the plan is that for people to use their own phone or their laptop download one of these free uh, editing apps and then download one of the, pick one of the videos, pick one of the audios, record your poem and join them all together on a poetry film. Upload it onto your phone or whatever and send it on. So it's a kind of a little competition. Now, obviously that's for people who are just getting going. If you want to make a poetry film from scratch, and, uh, that's fine. It has to be under two minutes. Make it from whatever you want and whatever sources you want and send it on. And we'll look at them all on the 6th of October and we'll play them. So it's, and then someone's going to pick a winner, maybe Moe's or maybe me or whoever. Um, so we, we, we'll, um, you know, that should be fun. And, um, it, you know, it's a fun way to make a poetry for them, I think. So I'm just going to show you a video now. Um, just one point. The starting point for this video was for me to record my poem. So I recorded a poem on my H1 Zoom, which I showed you a while ago. Um, but obviously, you if you don't have that, you just record it on your recording uh, on, your, on, on, your, on your smartphone. Um, you know, you can do things to, to make the recording better. You can make soft uh, pillows and um, duvets around your room, and that will absorb the sound. And just um, you, you'll have a better recording of your point. So here now I've talked enough. Um, I'm going to share the screen again and show you this eight minute video of me making a poetry film from uh, the two minute videos.
so now we're going to do a seven minute video on how to make a, a simple portrait film using the two minute clips that I uploaded to Google Drive uh, there's four of them there and I'm going to use one of them I'm now opening Final Cut Pro which is my video editing software on my iMac um, you, that's what's happening now I, you will have a similar kind of uh, video package on your Android or your laptop um, you know I've gone through a good few of them and they all look kind of similar um, so the first thing I do is open a, a, a library and um, create a new project that's what I'm doing there now up on the, on, on the top of the screen and giving it a name workshop 4 the the screen in front of you if you has three sections really on the on the left hand side is the the media that you import and the project names on the top is the um, video that you can watch that you're making and on the bottom is the timeline where you actually do the editing um all that will clear now um very shortly and um, you will have a, a clear screen for a new project There you go, that's a clear screen and we can start and the first thing I'm doing is going to import media from my computer and I'm going to import um, the poem which we made using the Zoom H1 which I showed you a while ago. So I'm going to my um, downloads and I'm importing Zoom H1 uh, and uh, it's called Zoom 7, um, not to be confused with the Zoom. The, uh, the social media um, program that we're using um, now so that's a download there up on the top left now I'm going to download the clip and that's what I'm downloading now I'm downloading a clip where some women uh, are dressed up as uh, astronauts um, that um, I created it's one of the two minute clips and now I'm also going to download as a matter of interest um, one of the s shorter clips from from the internet that I downloaded to create that two minute clip it's written by Pex by it's on pixels.com um, and it's made by Cotton Bro and that's that 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 I used four of them to make up the two minute clip so that's that's what I just did there so the last thing I'm downloading now is um, the audio no I'm not using the two minute audio clips that I've um, put on Google Drive free I'm using uh, an audio clip here from uh, sound effects which you'll have sound effects as well on your uh, on your c computers on your uh, editing um, s softwares and I'm after taking down two of them and dragging them onto the timeline that's what I did and um, they're called drone um, dark suspense because them um, and I brought down two of them because they're only half and they're only a minute each now I'm also after dragging down the other two um, uh, pieces of media, the two minute clip there on top uh, and also the poem which is the, the smaller blue section on the bottom that I'm after downloading. Um, so now I'm just maneuvering around the, the video and the background audio and the uh, poem which um, is the poem is the blue the audio is the green and the um, you can see the uh, the video which is two minutes long so I'm, I'm maneuvering them around there that's what you do you pull a uh, drag uh, drag and drop that's the the system and they all they all work the same way really um, now I'm just after bringing down a title from titles section and I'm going to give a name to this so that's just a short title and as I'm typing in now up in the right hand corner um, the name of this poetry film which is called Ring of White Anters a ring of anthers on a ribwort plantain uh, which is the name of the poem it's a very short poem and um, as you say it comes up on the video um, quite easy um, and the next thing I'm going to do is change the sound there on the audio and just reducing the sound on the audio it's quite easy to do that do that then I'm taking what's called a blade or a clip tool and I'm just going to cut the poem uh, here into three pieces because the poem is only 45 seconds long so I need to spread it out over the length of the of the film 
so I'm cutting it. I'm getting rid of some of the things that uh, are are necessary. Um, I I I um misrecorded on some parts, and I know that, so I'm going to delete them, and um just move around the poem there now, so that it um it's in the right place and it it matches the video, where uh, where where it works on the video, um. And and that's what you do really. Uh, I was thinking that you can start your poetry film with the sound. You can start your poetry film with the poem. You can start the poetry film with the the video. Um, you you have to start with something. And I normally would start with the poem because that the, and you set the timing then to that, the timing of your video. Um, but in this case, obviously, I started with the two minute film, and then I um moved the sound around to match that. But it's nice to have gaps between your words on the video because there's so much happening. Uh, just don't do the poem straight off. That's what I think. Um, have have time. Now, I'm also cutting the audio, the backdrop, the drone, dark suspense, and um changing the audio on that. Now I'm just the film is finished there now, and I'm just playing the film, and I'm going to show you the film in a minute when we're finished this video, uh, the film that I made there. Uh, so that's what I'm doing and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save it up there in the right hand corner I'm going to save it to the highest quality and this will save it to my own computer again um, and then you can you know you can um, you're done then and the last thing I'm going to do now in this video is I'm just going to go into a different poetry film which I made before uh, uh, an animated one and it's it's just a much more complicated and I just wanted to show you this that um, before we were doing a very simple one but this um, poetry film has an awful lot of layers in it on the timeline as you can see and um, there was in this animation there was six frames per second made and each of those I had to draw independently so as you can see how, how layered it is there and that's it really I'm going to leave it at that and we're going to go back to the workshop I hope that was helpful No, um, I'm kind of very aware that uh, you're listening to my voice all the time. So I think it's time to, to go back over to some questions there. If there's any questions or anyone wants to ask anything. I have two questions, Colm. One from Mose. Will publishers accept your poems after, after they have been published online as part of a poetry film? I would think not. Uh, so that's something you have to to, to think about because I, as I said, uh, the the poetry film, or sorry, the the poetry journal world, is uh, has a lot of rules. Um, they don't make much sense to me, but um, uh, so I, I mean, any poetry films I've made have either been published beforehand, or else I've made a decision that I wouldn't send the poem for publication. Uh, so you kind of have to make a choice there. But that well, is, that's I, I, a good question. I, I did the same in my uh, recent poetry film. I decided that this is going for poetry film and not for, um, you know, submission to any, anywhere else. So I think that's a good call to make the decision like that. Uh, any tips on adding subtitles from Mary? Um, adding subtitles? Um, I know, um, so you know, what I find at the moment is that most of my poetry films, I'm actually doing subtitles and voice. Um, I know a lot of poetry filmmakers who just do the subtitles, and like, in um, it's very easy with the with the um, the app to do it, and you, you can do whatever font you want, you know, whatever size you want. You can make it move across the screen. You can do literally anything, and it really adds to the to the um, poem. Like I think there was there was a kind of a, a very very style uh, style of poetry film years ago that I don't see as much anymore. Where it was a bit like uh, the um, the uh, Bob Dylan video, you know, it was uh, the words come at you, as you know they, they could be uh, thrown up in front of you, you know, one word at a time or letters at a time. So this kind of thing, it's kind of a you know, it's been done, I think, but you know, so um, that that's one style. But, um, I think really the main point of the um, of the subtitles are that people can read a poem and listen to it, and you know you've a double whammy then of it going into your head. I don't know. Does that help? 
Yeah. Mary, is Sorry, it? Sorry, yes, yes, Mary that was Mary. Oh, Mary, was it? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, no, that answers my question. Thanks. Oh, yes, yeah. I know Mary, I see Mary up there. Uh, Mary is from um, the Isle of Man, aren't you, Mary? Uh, and I think you make poetry films as well, because, um, and one of the, the best poetry film makers around is also in the Isle of Man. Um, Janet Lees. Janet Lees. She's, and you can look up her stuff online, it's fantastic. Yeah, she's amazing. The okay, next question from Anne is, can you use a poem that has been published in a journal for making poetry film? Yeah, um, well, I'm just, yeah, I, uh, I suppose that's, it depends on the journal really, doesn't it? Because some of these journals tell you that you can't publish it again. Um, you know, sometimes I've ignored a lot of these rules. It's your poem, you know? Um, a lot of these people who, who, who are in charge of these journals aren't looking at put on the internet any other poetry films. So, I mean, it's your poem, you can do what you want with it. But, you know, if you follow the rules exactly, you, you'll end up doing nothing. That's, that, that's the reality of it, you know. Okay, come now, these the end of the questions, as far as I can see. Good. Uh, I, I, I just, um, what I'm going to do now, so is. I'm going to just show another film. What I'm going to show, I'm going, just going to, I, I hope that video was helpful, the seven, the eight minute video. Um, what I'm going to show now is the video that I made in that film. It's two minutes long. Now it's no masterpiece. It was just made for the purposes of, of uh, explaining how to do it. But then here it goes. Ring of white anthers on a ribwort plantain. Last night I dreamt of Mother Earth, how it must have been to live on the first home, before Red Giant, White Dwarf and Death, before Diaspora. the film footage from those days but some things only dreams can show a child plucking soldiers from the hedge meadow sweet in the air going nowhere So, as you can see, it's the, the words and the um, video have very little to do with each other. But then, um, one one thing I suppose it was kind of a science fiction feel, um, and and um, basically that's one of the videos you can use as well. Like this fantastic stuff up on the internet to use, and that's one of the the videos that I have. Uh, it's a combination of four pieces that I put in there, but they were all made by the same artist, um, Cotton Bro. And as you see at the end, I put down attribution cotton bro pixels.com and uh, that's all you have to do um, uh, the next thing i'm just going to show now is one more poetry film we're nearly there um, and this is the other poetry film uh, that i had in uh, in the kind of video a while ago and that's called yesterday's wardrobe um, it's an animation so this took a lot more work from my point of view 
and um, I'm just going to show it to you um, as well. Yesterday's wardrobe. When I was young, I had a pair of tan suede brogues I thought were the bee's knees and a grandfather shirt I bought in a factory sale. I had a denim jacket that I wore winter and summer and blonde curly hair and I'd go walking by the riverbank taking photos of the trees. I had a woolen cricket jumper that cost me £60 and a navy blazer with red silk lining and I'd go dancing on Saturday night with the boys. Shirt in or out I asked John T before the slow set started as I scanned the floor then put my bottle down and asked you out. The blazer's gone. And tan suede shoes. The curly hair. And camera too. The woolen cricket jumper was never worn. But you're still here and the grandfather shirts still hanging in our wardrobe my mother told me never throw away your luck Now, there it goes. Um, so we're, we're actually coming to the end. So um, I think we're, we're just after making the time well. Um, so the last thing is the competition. Hopefully, um, as many of you as possible. I think there was about 40 on there. Uh, maybe some of them are coming in for the open mic now. But hopefully as many as you possible will make a poetry film in the next month and send it in before the 6th of October. And we'll show them all at the next um, tomorrow's um, uh, spoken word. Um, and the only rules are, as you say, as, as I said, uh, you have to be at the current Zoom meeting. Uh, obviously you're, you're going to know about it if you're at the Zoom meeting. Uh, you have to make the film within the month and it has to be max two minutes long. Um, and if you need any help, I'm available to give help. Um, I sent my email, so um, I'm available to give some help uh, to anyone who's uh, interested as well and just email me um so uh, any more questions from anyone or any other comments well thank you colin number one number two mosey wants to what planet did you find those suits on <laughs> that they were uh, i don't know that there's that, that that person who made those is cotton bro i i assume it's a woman but i'm not sure and it's on pixels.com okay. so where she got them that's good like you know um, but uh, they look fantastic, didn't it? Fantastic. And uh, yesterday's wardrobe is, is still one of my favourites. Thank you. Any, any other questions from anyone? Hi, Colm. I just wanted to... Um, my name's Catrice. Uh, I've seen you in a few open mics and I love yeah. your work. Um, I just wanted to underscore, make sure I understood, so um, how your storage works for your completed pieces. I think I heard you say that you store your completed pieces on your iMac. Um, do you also store any, are they in the cloud? Do you have an external hard drive to hold so much data? I know you said you have one terabyte, but I'm interested just to, just to double check. Yeah, I, when, when I got my iMac, it, it's one terabyte seemed an awful lot, but it's amazing how quickly it fills up when you're making different versions of a film, you know? So 
um, there's only about 20% left in it and I keep on having to clean it. I have an external hard drive as well, but I just use them for my own personal photos. I don't tend to save my films onto it. Um, what, what I, I, Vimeo, I, I put them up on Vimeo. I, I find Vimeo very good and Vimeo is, you have to pay for it, all right. I'm not sure how much it is. 10, I think it's maybe something like 10 euro a month. And um, for, for the, the Vimeo, I have Vimeo is basically, um, it, it's the cloud, it's, it's uh, where you can keep your videos um, and you can keep uh, HD videos up there. So it's a lot better quality than YouTube. Um, and then you can enter Film Freeway from Vimeo Direct. Whereas if you had it up on YouTube, it, 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 the quality wouldn't be there. So I use Vimeo, Catrice, um, and I find it very good. Would you also be able to to like store them in Google Drive or something like that? Or would that be too too? Uh, I, again, I, I don't because I I I mean Vimeo is designed really for filmmakers, so I think Google Drive is more like I use Google Drive, but yeah, again, you have to pay, and I'm not sure of the quality either. Do you lose quality when you're moving things around? And um, you know, I'm, you know, I think you do sometimes, and I'm not sure. Uh, you could sa save in Google Drive, but all I can say is that. When I'm entering competitions, uh, they never talk about um, Google Drive as an option. You know, it's it's Vimeo and there's other other platforms out there as well. But uh, YouTube and Google Drive generally aren't aren't uh, mentioned as a place to uh, enter from. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say thank you. That was valuable information. I really needed to know that. Thank yeah, you very no much. Uh, are there any other questions? Because I'm going just going to finish this recording and then we can start again with the open mic. The Arts Council will only look at YouTube. That's the Irish Arts Council. Okay. Well, anyone dealing with the Irish Arts Council? <laughs> Go on YouTube. Well, I suppose they, they don't have any um, poetry film um, competitions at the moment. Okay. I know I, I seen that actually, that they, they only look at, at YouTube at the moment, but I, th I saw actually on, on something that they're actually going to try to open it up to Vimeo. Um, they made, someone commented on that, on, on, on that website. Well, uh, on behalf of the where can we get on McDonald's? Anne McDonald's book is uh, something for the open mic because I think um, Margaret's going to read Anne McDonald's uh, poem. Um, I just want to thank Colm for in the, indeed a very a great workshop and there's going to be a great follow up as well. Uh, maybe we should remind people that if you do intend to uh, ask for his services or um, join the competition, don't wait until the very, very, very last minute because. The, the video will also have to be assessed by whoever is the jury. Okay, thank you, Catherine, for... Um, thanks, Catherine, and thanks, Moz, and thanks, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone, for being here, and I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Adieu. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, Colin, for a fantastic um, introduction. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad I sent my film before I saw yours. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Modesty. Thanks again. Okay.